Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Amanda. So if the state of the world right now has you a little concerned and you're hoping to become more self-sufficient in the coming days, then there are a lot of skills that you need to be learning right now. It's really important to stock food and to have your pantries full, but that's just the beginning. To become self-sufficient, there are a lot of different skills that you need to learn. Skill stacking is a really important habit to put into your life so that you can become self-sufficient and protect your family when there is a crisis. If you focus on learning skills now, you will be set when something happens. Because when the grid goes down, when the natural disaster hits, we're not going to have the luxury of learning a new skill. We're going to be stuck. So having those skills ready so you have them when you need them is really important. So I've put together a list of 15 skills that are essential to know before it's too late. Number one is growing food. This seems like a basic step like a no-brainer, but it's surprising how many people who prep don't actually know how to grow their own food. You need food to survive, and the supermarkets only have about three days supply of food. So it's important to be able to know how to grow in your area, in your climate, and in the soil you have. How to amend that soil to grow better crops so that you can have food for years to come. Second, it's important to know how to cook the food you have. Cooking from scratch seems to be a skill that's been lost in the land of convenience and in the day and age where people are gone for work, gone for school, gone for activities. Getting DoorDash or Uber Eats or just ordering in pizza seems to be the way things go now. And that basic skill of learning how to cook has been lost. So learning how to cook the ingredients that you grow, the ingredients you have, and learning basic skills like baking bread will be vital should the grid go down or in a natural disaster. Number three is following this trend and it's learning how to preserve the food that you grow and preserve food that you get from other places like farmer's markets. So learning how to ferment, how to can, how to dry food is absolutely essential to know so that you can put up food for the winter and you can put up your own stores. You can use food that you've grown yourself and food that's in season and more nutritious. If you're looking to learn how to do this, I've linked my playlist on canning below. Go take a look at it and see if there's anything there that you can learn. If you're wanting to learn these skills so you're more prepared for any situation that can come this way, hit that subscribe button because I go over a lot of different traditional skills and teach you how to be more self-sufficient. Number four is animal husbandry. Learning how to raise animals is an essential skill. Learning how to raise backyard chickens, how to have backyard rabbits, even learning how to raise Larger livestock would be a really good skill to have in a grid down situation so that you have that animal stock there for you when you need it. It's vital in a survival situation to be able to have food stores and having those animals there so that you can breed and create more food is a very essential skill. Following that up is also learning how to butcher those animals. It's useless to be able to raise an animal and not know how to harvest it to eat. So learning how to raise a rabbit and butcher a rabbit, those are, will be some really good skills to have in a situation where as HTF. If you're looking to learn how to raise rabbits, I've got a playlist linked down below. Please feel free to follow it so you too can raise your own rabbits. I'll be doing a video soon on butchering those rabbits and learning how to tan the hides. Number six is hunting and fishing. These skills take a while to learn and how to master. 
So it's really important that you start learning these skills now. Rice and beans will only take you so far. And being able to grow the amount of rice and beans you need for your family is really hard to do. So being able to go out and get another protein source, like hunting deer or moose or bear and fishing for fish, those will be essential practices in a grid down situation, in a disaster situation. So start learning now because it will be important later on. Learning how to start a fire. It is so important to learn how to start a fire. Not only will it keep you warm, but you can cook your food on it. So it is very important, which brings us to skill number eight, which is learning how to cook on a fire. It's one thing to learn how to cook on your own stove, but learning to cook on a fire takes finesse. So you're not scorching the outside of your food and leaving the inside raw. So it's really important to learn how to cook on a fire so you're doing it properly. Number nine is learning to forage for food. So again, this is a skill that takes a lot of time and practice to know what berries and mushrooms are good for you, which ones could kill you. Learning what food is healthy and what food is not, what food is edible, what food is not. Because food is so vital, if you cannot grow your own food and the supermarkets are all down and you've run out of food, you're gonna need to know how to forage food for yourself and your family. It's a really great skill to start learning now because it will take you a while to learn what in your climate, in your area, is edible. Herbalism is number 10. Learning to treat illness and ailments with the wild ingredients around you will be a really great asset should SHDF, should you need it. Having that skill set takes a while to learn but it is number 11 is learning how to build a shelter have say a natural disaster happens and your house is gone and there's no supports around but you need shelter learning how to build that shelter in the climate where you are to keep you safe is absolutely important to do so learning to build a shelter is number 11 on the list number 12 is learning how to follow a map and use a compass. We have all become dependent on our GPS systems and many do not know how to read a map or follow a compass. And in a disaster situation where you're looking to find shelter, where you're looking to find a bug out situation, if you can't read a map, your cell phone and GPS is not going to help you. You need to be able to learn to number read a map 13 and use basic first aid and CPR. Again, in a disaster situation, medical personnel might be really overwhelmed. So learning how to look after a wound or do CPR or the Heimlich maneuver could save a life. It could save one of your family members. So that is also you should look for a Red Cross for a St. John's ambulance near you or someone else who teaches basic first aid and CPR and get certified. Learning how to sew, knit, and mend is number 11. In a grid down situation, you're not going to be able to run to the store to replace something that's broken. You're not going to be able to run to the store or go to Amazon to get something new. You are going to have to mend it or sew it or knit something new, knit a sweater or knit some socks. I think that knit this a blanket would be very useful warm. to have. Next, and I think this one should be number one, is purifying water. Knowing how to purify water will save your life. In natural disasters, a lot of water bodies get tainted and are undrinkable. So being able to take water and purify it for Drinking can save the life of yourself and your family. And you Last should on our be list well is learning how to save seeds. how to do that. It's awesome to know how to grow your own food, but if you can't save seeds, you're only going to have food for one season. If you know how to save your own seeds, then you can have food for years to come. If you'd like to learn how to do this skill, check out the link and check out my video that I did on how to save seeds from your garden crop. It's no surprise that a lot of these survival skills are also homesteading skills. 
Homesteading can be done anywhere, in the apartment, in an urban setting, or on big acreage. I personally have a suburban homestead, and I teach all the skills that I do here to have a homestead and become more self-sufficient in a suburban area. If you also would like to figure out how to become more self-sufficient in a suburban area, hit subscribe and check out all my videos, and I'll show you how. That's it for me for today, and I'll see you next time.